There is a power within you that can lift your life to its highest level. It can change illness into health. It can bring peace amidst turmoil. It can bring success out of failure and victory out of defeat. It can bring companionship and happiness out of loneliness. It responds to you. For this is the power that dwells within you, and so it is. Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight for The Way to a Wonderful Life. I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California, teaching the evolutionary science of mind, the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. For more information about this ministry, please visit www.revbates.tv or www.revbatesontheradio.org. You can also find me on YouTube.com by just putting in the search box Rev Bates Way to a Wonderful Life channel, and you will find audio videos of these radio presentations that you can listen to 24-7 in both English and Spanish. You can also find me by searching for on MSN, Bing, Yahoo, and Google. Just put in the search box, Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, and you will find everything that you want to find out about this ministry. Now, this is a healing teaching ministry, so you can send me your prayer requests, you can send me your, your questions, your comments, you can tell me what's going on in your life, and I will respond to you personally, and everything that you send to this ministry is held in the highest of confidentiality, so you can send it with the peace of mind of knowing that that, that which is between you and and this ministry is between you and God and, and, and nothing else. So each and every one of us can find that within us, can discover that thing within us that will bring forth our greatest and most wonderful and marvelous healing when we decide to be healed. Now, you can write to me once again at P.O. Box 1173. That's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. That's address those letters to uh, Reverend Henry Bates. That's B A T E S, P O Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. And you can call me in the Los Angeles area at 818 476 0088 or in Palm Springs at 760 778 5677. Once again, this is The Way to a Wonderful Life, and I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California, teaching the evolutionary science of mind, the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. So as we move into this brand new year, we want to feel the energy of newness, and we want to be able to, to reach, reach out in our mind to whatever it is that, that appeals to us and, and feel within ourselves and have that faith and that belief that whatever it is that we have chosen to experience this year, that we can, we can choose it and we can experience it through our faith and our belief in all things good. So let's know together that as we take these words from this message into our mind and we start realizing that there's a higher truth, a higher truth than what we've learned from the world, and we start learning that there's a higher truth than what we've learned from religious theology, and we start learning that this higher truth, this higher truth is what Jesus was trying to get us all to understand so we can know within ourselves that we can do all things, all things, through Christ which strengthens us, and that Christ is that indwelling presence of God, it's that spark of the divine that will lift us up to our highest highest level, it will change illness into health, it will bring peace amidst turmoil, and it will bring success out of failure if we believe that it will, if we recognize it, identify with it, and know that this presence, this power, this spirit, this intelligence that created us and created all things that we see will create for us those things that, that, that 
fill our heart with joy and fill our heart with love and fill our heart with happiness and fill our heart with harmony and peace of mind and let us feel that presence and sense that presence of that that divine spirit in a greater way as we start dwelling on these things that we're choosing to experience in 2002. Once again, this is the Way to Wonderful Life, and our Way to Wonderful Life message for tonight is don't look back. Don't look back. Don't. Look forward to 2012. Don't look back. Don't. Look forward to 2012. I'm going to begin this with some, some wonderful words from the mystical for Dr. Frank Richelieu, who wrote the book, The Art of Being Yourself. The Art of Being Yourself it means that we are creating ourselves every day. We're creating that that person that we are, we're creating our personality, we're creating our success, we're creating our, our prosperity, we're creating our joy and our happiness and our peace of mind and our harmony. So we must understand this art, this artistry of moving our heart, our mind, and our soul and being ourselves and being ourselves. The art of being yourself. Dr. Frank Richelot, he writes, stay to yourself. There is nothing, no thing, there is nothing within me that denies my good. There is nothing, no thing, within me that denies my good. There is nothing within me that denies my prosperity. There is nothing within me that denies me the right job. There is nothing within me that denies me love and companionship. There is nothing within me but the wonderful realization of my oneness with infinite intelligence, the source of all supply of every kind and description. The source of all the supply of every kind and description. Now, can we believe this about ourselves? Can we, can we have faith that this is so? Can we know that this is the truth of our being? Because God has created us in its image and its likeness, and we must know that within us, within us there is that something greater than that which is within the world. So we can affirm and we can know and we can have faith and we can believe that there is nothing within me that denies my good. There is nothing within me that denies my prosperity. There is nothing within me that denies me the right job. There is nothing within me that denies me love and companionship. There is nothing within me but the wonderful realization of my oneness with infinite intelligence, the source of all supply of every kind and description. That means both things of the spirit and things of the material, because we want to break down everything that we desire. We want to break it down to a thought, because thoughts are things. There is power in a thought. God thought this world into being. First there was the Word, and the Word became whatever it was that God was choosing it to become. Um, so we know that that word, that word came from a thought. It came from a thought in the mind of the, of the infinite presence, power, and intelligence that created all that we see. And so we know that first that thought must arise in our awareness, and we must understand that thought, be aware of what that, that thought is symbolizing. And then as we realize what it's symbolizing, then we can speak our word and we can see the things in our experience that have come from this creative action in our mind. So let's continue with what Dr. Frank Richelieu has to write here. He writes, what is inside of us, what is inside of us, inside of us, is what counts, not what appears on the outside to be causing us unhappiness or problems, because our nature seems to get us off track now and then, we must constantly, constantly, underline that word constantly in your mind, constantly be aware that the universe, God, is on our side. There is nothing in the whole universe against us. We are one with it. 
say to yourself, I affirm my oneness with life today. We know that we're one with life today because we are alive. We are listening to this message. You're hearing these words. So you know that you're part of this oneness of life because you are alive. You are alive. You may, may not be fully awake. Some days I'm not. But you are alive, so you're one with life today. So turn your attention away from our problems, he tells us, and keep in alignment with our source, with God, from which our every need is met. Every need. Underline every need is met. Now, this doesn't just mean the things that get us by. That just doesn't mean the, the necessities of life. It means those things that make us feel that sense that Jesus felt when he said, I have come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. And that I is within each and every one of us. So we can say within ourselves, I have come, that is this idea within me, this thought within me, has come so that I may have life and I may have it more abundantly, but I must, I must claim, claim that thing that I desire to experience. And so we go to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 6 from the Holy Bible, and James is telling us, but let them ask in faith, and we know that ask in the Aramaic, in the language of Jesus, meant to claim, let them ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. That is driven and tossed by the wind. So let them ask in faith, claim that thing that we desire, the, that thing that we're choosing to experience, claim it with faith and belief. And know that, that there's something that's responding to us. There's something that's responding to us. We can read in the evolutionary science of mind, the Gospels of the Holy Bible, which outlines the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus. We can read in the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, and other spiritual philosophies that we must turn from the problem to the solution, and we must make a definite decision to do so. And this can also be stated as turn from what we don't want to that which we want. Turn from what we don't want to that which we want. And turn from it in our mind and keep our mind focused on having that. But as Dr. Frank Prisciolo points out in his book, our nature, our nature seems to get us off track now and then. And so we must become more definite more definite in our decision to move forward towards our ideals and don't look back, and don't look back. And what is this nature that gets us off track? But our five senses, our ability to see, our ability to hear, our ability to touch, our ability to taste, and our ability to smell. Those who rely completely on these five senses will find themselves attached to the physical, to that which we can see, that which we can hear, that which we can touch, can taste, and can smell. And this attachment, attachment to the physical can and will separate us from the creative spirit from God, and so we lose our, our feeling of power, we lose our sense of faith, we lose our ability to enlarge our consciousness, and we doubt our ability to choose what is good for us and what is not. Our power is God, our intelligence is of God, and the spirit within us that makes us aware of this truth is of God. But we cannot see the spirit, we cannot touch the spirit, we cannot taste or smell the spirit, and so we lose sight of it. We lose sight of God. Yet no one, no one doubts the presence of gravity or the presence of the air in which we breathe, yet we can see neither or draw a picture of either one. Have you ever seen anybody draw a picture of air or a picture of gravity? We know that's absolutely not, not going to happen because we can't see it. We can only be aligned with its nature and when we're aligned with the nature of the air that we breathe and we're aligned with the nature of gravity, then we start reaping the benefits of that alignment. And we must align our mind or align our mind in the same way with God, the same way with God. We must identify, identify ourselves with the mind power 
the mind power of Jesus. This is Jesus did. We must identify ourselves with our faith and our belief and our understanding and our knowing that, that God is for us, that God is always for us. So if we're choosing to experience a wonderful, loving relationship, we must not look back at the days of loneliness or the days of previous relationships that were not all that we desired them to be. And this means not to linger, not to linger in our mind on those relationships that we wish we had had either. We didn't have them for a reason, and it was a good reason. We must remain steadfast in our decision to have the wonderful, loving relationship that we choose to have right now, that we choose to have right now. Our inner attentiveness, uh, our inner attentiveness, underline that inner attentiveness to that which we want in a definite choosing of the ideals that we seek in a relationship will bring forth the right relationship Soon enough, soon enough, creating within our mind that which we want is somewhat like conscious dreaming. But in reality, it is aligning our mind, or aligning our thoughts with the creative mind, with the spirit, with God, with intelligence. Now, some of us, some of us may be looking for another job or a career or something, something better for us to do, whatever that may be, one that compensates us more generously than the one we have, or one in which we feel a greater appreciation for our efforts. Anybody ever feel that? They wanted to be appreciated more. I think everybody has had that experience where they felt unappreciated. This new job or career is not going to open up to our awareness if we are still thinking about how unappreciated we are in our current job or thinking of how unfair our compensation is. Our mind must be filled with the images and feelings of success and satisfaction in the job or career we desire. Don't look back to the job that you have left in your consciousness, even if you are still currently employed in it. Do everything in your present job as if you were doing it in the job in which you are well compensated and well appreciated, and the new opportunity, that new opportunity will show up in the right and perfect time and the right and perfect way, and those feelings of accomplishment felt within your own heart and within your own mind will be that tremendous attracting power that will bring it forth to you. Because we know as we align our mind with the mind of God, with the presence of God, the spirit of God, the power and the intelligence of God, just like we align ourselves with the nature of gravity, if we align ourselves with the nature of God, that God will correspond to us, correspond to us to what we believe. He will, God will correspond, this infinite presence, this divine action of law will correspond to us as we believe. As Jesus said, it is done unto you as you believe. As we keep looking back to the past, as we keep looking at the physical and making our judgments and getting our feelings from what it is that's going on in the physical, from what we can see, hear, feel, taste, touch, and smell, then we lose sight of this spirit, this attracting power, the spirit that's moving, moving, trying to move through our heart, our mind, and our soul to bring forth something greater in our experience. Now, more and more people, more and more people, you hear it all out of all the time, more and more people are becoming aware of the power within them to create the life experience they desire. Country music star Brad Paisley in the August 2009 edition of Reader's Digest magazine, had this advice for his sons. He said, visualize what you want out of life with all your might. Close your eyes and build it in your mind. If you want to be an architect, visualize the things you want to build. If you want to be a songwriter, visualize the effect your music will have on the audience. That's what I do, he said. If you don't dream about what you want, it will never 
come true. It will never come true. Now, Brad Paisley's words will definitely, definitely have a powerful effect on his sons, just as he has demonstrated in his own life his own success and his own creative ability to perform and to entertain audiences. So when we seek that new within our inner world of thought, in our, as we practice this inner attentiveness, as we practice this inner attentiveness with faith, we automatically take our mind off the path. And even if our present circumstances are challenging, using our mind to visualize, to image, or affirm that which we want will provide the way for us to move through the challenges to a life more desirable, to a life more desirable. But we must be- begin to believe in ourselves. We must begin to believe in ourselves. We must begin to know within ourselves that we are the ones that place the value on who we are. We are the ones that are, that are opening up that doorway in our mind to accept something greater and something more, something more exciting, something more wonderful, something more prosperous, something more successful, something more loving and joyful. We're the ones that must open that doorway in our consciousness to let it in to accept it, to receive it. So we must be be happy with who we are. We must be satisfied with who we are. And we can declare and we can exclaim right now, right where we are, that I am well satisfied with me. I am well satisfied with me. With me, how do you feel when you say that? I am. That's I am. That's the power and presence of God within us. That's the dominion and authority that God gave us over our earthbound conditions. I am. That power within me is declaring, I am well satisfied with me. I am well satisfied with me. How do you feel after you say that? How do you feel? Do you feel good? Do you feel lifted up? Do you feel like somehow you're connecting greater, uh, you're connecting more with the spirit of life that's moving through you, the, the spirit of life that, that, that created you, the presence, the power, the intelligence of God that, that's seeking to express itself through you in a greater way? Do you feel that within yourself? And if you do, let's say one more time. Let's go to this next one. Spirit is mighty and marvelous in me. Spirit, that is God. That is joy. That is happiness. That is peace, harmony, and beauty. Spirit is mighty and marvelous in me. Spirit is mighty and marvelous in me. And so we want to understand this, and we want to know that we can say these things because the radical Jesus said, follow me, follow me. He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world. And if, if he can say, I am the light of the world, and we're going to follow him, we're going to do as he do, did, we're going to believe as he believed, we're going to have the faith that he had, the same faith that he had, we're going to try to build our faith up to that same measure of faith, then we've got to follow what he does and be willing to say those kind of words about ourselves, I am well satisfied with me. I am well satisfied with me. That's no different than saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Now, so many people say, oh, Jesus is the light of the world. But didn't he say, you are the light of the world too? That's what he said. You are the light of the world. And he said, let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Be well satisfied with yourself. Feel that mighty and marvelous spirit within yourself. Declare that you, you, you feel it. Declare that you've got a sense of it. Recognize it. Identify with it. And know that this 2012 is a new year. It's a year for us to feel mighty and marvelous, to feel that spirit mighty and marvelous in me, to feel that I am well satisfied with myself. And I am knowing and I am believing and I'm saying yes to those words of Jesus. And I am saying to myself that I am the light of the world. And I'm going to let this light, 
this spirit, this power, this intelligence of God. I'm going to let this light shine on my relationships. I'm going to let it shine on my finances. I'm going to let it shine in my career. I'm going to let it shine on my home. And I'm going to let it shine on my success and my prosperity. And this year is going to be my year, my year to declare that spirit is mighty and marvelous in me. And not only is that the truth for me, not only is that the truth for me, you're going to say to yourself, but I am well satisfied with myself. I am well satisfied with myself. Now, the great teacher, Dr. Robert Bitzer, who built that church up on Sunset Boulevard, wrote in his book, All Power to You, that we do not fight an unpleasant environment. Don't fight it. What we resist persists, so don't fight it. That which surrounds us is the manifestation of thought. So what is our thought? If we don't like something, we have a thought that says, I don't like it. We have a thought about it that's not good. So we must change our thought about who we are. We must change our thought about what our life is about. We must change our thought about the world that we live in and know that that thought will symbolize whatever it is that we need. If we want a home, we want to think about home as the thought of the thoughts about home. What are my thoughts about a home? My first thought would be comfort. My second thought would be a sanctuary. My third thought would be a, a feeling, a sense of having, of having and being something. My sense of, of, of wanting and desiring to share that home with others. These are all thoughts that come into our mind. It doesn't do us any good to visualize anything if we don't know what that thing represents within our consciousness. So we must find the thought of the thing within our consciousness and dwell on that thought, get a sense of that thought, and then let that thought, let that thought be the impulse that moves our visualization, that moves the images in our mind, and moves us to speak our word and declare these things for us that we choose to experience. And we must know within our own mind that as we do, we're not looking back, we're feeling the presence, we're feeling the presence, we're, we're sensing the presence of the Spirit of the power of God, of the intelligence of the divine, as it moves through our heart and our mind and our soul, and we know, <coughs> pardon me, this is, this is not recorded nor edited, we know, we know that that is the thing, that impulse, that impulse within us to have a greater good, to experience a greater good, to experience a greater joy and happiness and peace and love and harmony and beauty and all things that concern us, that that is God itself moving through our heart and our mind and our soul in the most marvelous and wonderful way. Each and every one of us can, can increase our mold of acceptance that Dr. Bitzer tells us about, and we can know that that God, that spark of the divine within me, that image and likeness of God that, that God has created within me, that Christ within me that will strengthen me through this Christ, this, this image, this likeness of God, this indwelling presence of the Spirit, the presence, the power and the intelligence of God, I can do all things through this Christ, this spark of the divine, this image and likeness, this indwelling presence of God within me. I can do it, and I can be well satisfied with myself, and I can say it, that Spirit, God is mighty and marvelous in me. I am well satisfied with myself. And I'll say, yes, Jesus, you are the light of the world. And thank you, Jesus, for lifting up my awareness and for me realizing, and for me to know, and me to affirm, and for me to believe that I, too, am the light of my world. And each and every one of us can do this. And each and every one of us can feel this. And each and every one of us can have this power of the Spirit working in our life in the most wonderful and marvelous way as we let it correspond to us correspond to that which we believe, correspond to that which we, we have faith in, correspond to that which we have, we have created that mold of or that, that sense of or that awareness of or that highest consciousness of in our mind.
We can do it. Each and every one of us that is dealing with a financial issue, a health issue, a career issue, or a relationship issue cannot afford to look back, not even to yesterday, for we will only increase the negatives by giving them our attention. We must reject doubt, which is the stepchild of fear, and affirm faith. We must look forward, forward with the realization, the realization of a larger expression of life and enlarge our consciousness of the allness of God in our life to accept and receive that which we believe, accept and receive that which we believe is ours to experience. We must take into our mind ideas that let us live large so we can live to the best we can imagine for ourselves and we can remind ourselves every day that destiny is not a matter of choice. It is a matter of choice, I'm sorry. Destiny is a matter of choice, not chance. There's no luck. There's nothing nothing but that choice. We're always choosing. So let's choose God, choose the good, choose this power, choose this spirit, choose this intelligence to move through our mind, our heart, and our soul in the greatest way possible, and let, let ourselves, let us, let ourselves realize that this power, this spirit, this God that created us is mighty and marvelous in us, in us. And let's go to those, those profound words of truth uttered by the radical Jesus. This is from the Gospel of Thomas. It's not included in the Holy Bible. There's like uh, almost a hundred of these Gospels that were left out. They only put the four in. They, they, those four kind of kind of <clears throat> became a foundation for religion. These others just kind of lead us away from religion in, in many, many ways. And believe me, I'm not telling you, leave your church, enjoy your church. Be there and be the change. Be the change that it needs. Be the change that it needs. Jesus said, when you give rise to that which is within you, when you give rise to that which is within you, what you have will save you. When you give rise, rise to that spirit within you, rise to that spark of the divine within you, rise to that, that desire of your heart within you, that which is within you. What you have will save you, he said. If you do not give rise to it, if you do not give rise to it, what you do not have will destroy you. What you do not have will destroy you. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me today, and I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on KTYM AM 1460 Radio and at www ktym.com worldwide this Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time. And be sure and visit RevBates.tv, RevBatesOnTheRadio.org, and YouTube.com, and just search for that Rev Bates Way to Wonderful Life channel and listen to these audio videos of these radio presentations in both English and Spanish. And send me your prayer requests, send me your comments, send me your questions. You can do that from RevBates.tv or RevBates on the radio.org, or you can write to me, Reverend Henry Bates, B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box 1173, P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. 